Hello, film fans. Welcome to the Film vs. Film podcast. My name is Martin Harries, your host, and I'm joined by the film encyclopedia man, Boaz Dix. We are a couple of filmmakers on occasion, but mainly can't stop yapping about movies. On this podcast, every episode we pick a topic from a film that's coming out at the cinema or on VOD. Myself and Boaz pick our favourite film from that topic, or team up against a guest and battle it out to decide which film will become the greatest film of all time. If you enjoy this podcast, please leave us a five-star review and subscribe. Please enjoy part two. Hello, welcome to part two of the podcast, talking animated films. Uh, And we have some responses from our car films episode the b critics podcast say cars easy do people watch our stuff you're not making these yeah. quotes up wow that's great <laughs> nice uh the movie boners say the transporter uh, was cool before drive and then anton kinnelove a regular responder says fast and furious eight <laughs> um i think your response last time was better with trilogies a uh, three calls when you said I'm at three. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you guys have a car film choice? I was trying to think of that one from the 1970s that's like, you know... Um, Vanishing Point? Mm, bullet? Bullet. That's the one I was thinking All right, of. yeah. Yeah, I thought you meant cool. Bullet. I also had the same thing that flashed <laughs> through my head. You mean Bullet with Steve McQueen. I don't know. <laughs> but there's a lot of great car action in Ronin. Have you guys ever seen Ronin? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's really great. Robert De Niro... Yeah, all over Paris. Uh, Jean Renault. I just watched mm-hmm. that movie with my dad, and um, unfortunately, my biggest takeaway was that young woman would not be attracted to Robert De Niro. <laughs> <laughs> I was so distracted by that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our choice then for animated films, Bowers is... Oh, no, no, it's your choice, sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would be like our choice. It would be our choice, but, you know... You know <laughs> yeah. If we ever go first. It should have been. The perfect world. <laughs> world of horror. What is um, your choice for animated films? We chose Spider Man Into the Spider Verse, which came out in 2018. Nice. Were there any other films in contention for you guys, or was it always this one? I don't know. I think I just wanted to watch this one again. <laughs> <laughs> We've already done Perfect Blue on the podcast, and we just did Mad God and Grave of the Fireflies. Oh, okay. Mad God, how's that? Like, uh, You'll have to listen to the podcast (laughs) (laughs) to get our unadulterated views on that one. (laughs) My fave. Cool. (laughs) Uh, Okay, fair enough. But yeah, yeah, short version is we were both not huge fans of it. I think he'd been trying to make that for like 40 years or some shit like that. He'd been trying to make it for a long, long time. (laughs) That was like, the main takeaway was like, man, that's pretty impressive. I wish I liked it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's interesting. Uh, (laughs) So what happens in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? All right, here's my brief synopsis. Spider-Man into the I'm spider. Timing you, yes, please. <laughs> I was actually timed on a on a podcast I went in. Wow, yeah, that was crazy. I was really? given what choose film was it? Yeah, I think it I was. haven't asked you about that yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think he gave me less than like a minute, and he was like, "You had a stopwatch." And I think he said I went oh, five really? seconds over oh. or something. And I was like, "What the hell?" I've never, oh dear, I've never had so much stress <laughs> ever. Yeah. So we're giving you thirty seconds, Mac. <laughs> go 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 Starting now. all right spider-man into the spider-verse is a story about a normal young boy named miles morales living in brooklyn new york he lives with his slightly overbearing father a police officer and his mother a nurse he's recently started at a private prep school after winning a lottery and struggles to feel comfortable at a place that feels elitist compared to his public school the place he feels most comfortable is with his uncle aaron and spends time with him against his father's wishes While doing graffiti with his uncle, he's bit by a radioactive spider, a la Spider-Man. He discovers a collider built by Kingpin, who is hoping to bring back his dead wife and son, spots the real Spider-Man who attempts to destroy the collider, but is unfortunately killed by Kingpin. But before he dies, he tells Miles it's his job to stop the collider or else the world will be destroyed. 
He struggles with this newfound responsibility and newfound powers and then meets Peter B. Parker, a Spider-Man from a completely different universe, and then meets a bunch of other spider people. Um, They all strive to stop the Collider and get the other characters back to their respective universes. Nice. Very concise. I do love it, Mac. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. (laughs) So, Mac, what's your initial reactions to this one when you first saw it? Oh, um, uh, astonishment, wow, tears, and I I do like superheroes. I I would say Spider-Man is definitely one of my faves. I think he's so... I don't know. He's... uh, of the people, relatable. you know? Yeah. I would say and, he's, like, really yeah. relatable. Like, when I was even younger, you know, he's a kid like me, he goes to school, and then and then when you even get older, it's like, he's poor, <laughs> you know, nothing yeah. goes his way. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, yeah. yeah. And the vibe of everyone can wear, anyone can wear the mask, I just think is so special. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, and it's so creative, like we were talking about earlier. Um, I just felt like it had been a while since I had seen something that really felt like they they went out on a limb, you know. Um, yeah. I don't feel like they played it safe with it, and but it really paid off. And I don't know. I just, I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> Christina? initial reactions yeah same um i really liked the animation style immediately the way it looked like a comic book yeah i i agree i mean it was just like something i had never seen before and all the hype around it at the time um was real and i'm just really yeah. glad that i got to see yeah. it in the theater quinn yeah um it's it blew my mind and i think that it was just one of those it's just a film that it feels very like you said, Spider-Man is a more relatable superhero and the idea that there are, you know, all of these different versions of, of spider people operating in multi-universes, like that is so appealing to me more than than anything. But um, I loved the character of Miles as well. Like I just, I thought it was a refreshing take. And even the other versions of Spider-Man felt very refreshing and really funny. But it was also, you know, it's it's a tough movie, too. And in certain aspects, there is a lot of trauma and there's some violence. And with every superhero movie, mm-hmm. you get that. But um, yeah, I just, it's beautiful. So the super fan of Spider-Man generally, yeah. uh, Boaz, what did you make of this one initially? Yeah, no, I mean, initially, and even on a rewatch, it's like, it's like, it's like watching it fresh again, you know, even though I've watched it, yeah. uh, so much happens in it, uh, so many plot points, so many jokes, it's just, it's just packed with good stuff that I think you can watch it a couple of times and still be wowed. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, initially, like, I think this was coming uh, at a moment where there was a ton of stuff to do with Spider-Man anyway. So he was in one of the Avengers movies, uh, there was a video game that dropped as well. Uh, so I was really big into Spider-Man that year. And I think this was probably kind of on the bottom of my list. Even though, you know, I like animation, it was really? like the first animated movie uh, that Sony has done for, you know, Spider-Man. And, and, uh, and uh, like superhero films don't really do animated movies all that much. So, you know, yeah. Marvel doesn't. So, um, and, you know, and you've got all these live action Spider-Man movies and a video game and stuff. So it was all, uh, kind of at the bottom of my list. Uh, uh, the focus is also not on Peter Parker as Spider-Man. It's some other kid. So I'm like, well, that's not really my Spider-Man. And uh, and then, you know, the a- animation did look really cool. I think in the first couple of trailers, it, the the choppiness of like the, mo- the motion, I wasn't sure about that. So it, it, it kind of, uh, it does start to feel very natural after like 10 minutes. You can sort of notice it for a few minutes and then it you just kind of forget about it and uh, uh, it kind of works. But... When I actually watched it, it was like like by far uh, probably my favorite, not maybe even just superhero film, but it's one of my favorite movies and definitely my favorite <laughs> Spider-Man movie. Like I, I, I thought before this, like, you know, Spider-Man 2 is like my magnum opus Spider-Man film and, uh, and superhero film. And I was like... Is it though? 
Man, I do, I do love it. Like you know, I think what you're gonna say, oh, is it though? I, was, I thought it was a really great film when it came out. It's definitely one of my favorite Spider-Man films, or, or yeah. probably my favorite. But I mean, when Tobey Maguire is talking to Kirsten Dunst, sometimes I just want to bury myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, please, no. Yeah, I don't tend to uh, remember uh, Kirsten Dunst too much, but you know, like uh, the, the general <laughs> film, you know, the Spider-Man stuff is really great. Um, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so. I was just very surprised that not only do I think it's it's much better than all the live action films, um, and not only is you know Peter Parker not the Spider Man that it's focusing on, but I think it's like the best depiction of a main Spider Man, and even like the side character Peter Parker is still like one of my favorite Peter Parkers. I'm like, yeah. uh, he's not even the focus, and even that Peter Parker I think is amazing, and the story's so good, it's so funny, the script is so tight. And there's lots of emotion and so much color and just like a huge wow factor yeah. and the, the choreography is great. Just so much is good about this film. And it did, it blew mm. my mind. I, I thought it was going to be probably good. I did <laughs> not, I have no idea how good um, it was going to be. So it's always stuck with me. We could have some crazy scores here, people. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I, I really love this as well. I mean, I would say as well, this is probably my favorite Spider-Man film. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. I think it is the best one. Yeah. A lot of people say No Way Home is the best one, but I'm like, there are characters in there that just don't need to be there. I think that's more the nostalgic. Fact. I like I like No Way Home, but I think it's the fact that yeah. it gets all the trilogies up. But I mean, if you just look at it, objectively both of them as a film and that's crazy as well because into the spider-verse it has none of that baggage of the other films it's not like a conclusion to a sick you know to to like three different series uh put together it's nothing like that it's one self-contained film but it's like so amazing and so epic you're like it's just crazy how good this is so directing then The first couple of action scenes are just superb where like Peter Parker's Spider-Man is fighting a massive green goblin. I found there was just a brilliant balance of fluid camera and animation with sharp action where you really have to like pay attention. And I love the little textual accents that pop up saying, ah, or whatever. I mean, it's so quick you can hardly read it, but it's really quick and fast and the lines that are in like multiple colors which are a completely different color from the background in the scene when a character is flying through the air in like anime style you know i liked how they changed it up when the power when the prowler uh chases miles and there's a moment where the prowler opens up his claws in one of on one of his hands and the background changes to like a blocky purple and green in mm-hmm. a star shape uh, to kind of accent it and the same happens when miles jumps the tracks and the scene flashes all orange and yellow yeah that was cool. accenting yeah. the trains headlights you know i loved all that and i even didn't mind the split screen where the prowler gets on his bike um mm. i don't like that in films but i didn't mind it here. <laughs> it was acceptable to me um, yeah, and I thought the designs of the villains was really interesting. Yeah. Like Kim Kingpin is massive. Yeah. I loved it how in some <laughs> shots his whole body just fills the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the gender swap of Doctor Ock. Uh, you didn't see that coming at all. Yeah, I think that is my f- one of my favorite villain reveals ever. Like that blew yeah, my really? mind. Okay. I thought it's so good. Hey, I'm James Lovino, and I'm here to tell you about Alternate Sides, a movie podcast with a twist. I've worked in the film business for two decades, but I haven't actually seen that many movies, and this has been driving my frequent collaborator, Saab, a self-confessed film snob, crazy. So every week, while he's stuck in his car trying to avoid getting a parking ticket, thanks to New York City's Alternate Side parking regulations, we discuss a classic film I've finally just gotten around to seeing. Alternate Sides, a new podcast about movies, parking, and a 25-year friendship, wherever you get your podcasts. Whoa. 
And she's not even a major focus in the action that follows. Like the directors yeah. show a massive confidence in the film that they keep the action focus on Miles still escaping while Peter B. Parker gets beat up by Dr. Art through the windows. And you have the odd shot that's focused on that fight, but it's mainly on Miles. So yeah, you have this massive reveal, yet the focus is still on Miles. I thought that was really kind of genius, really. And it doesn't feel like disappointing that you're not going to see what she can do, mm. even though you'd get little glimpses here and there. So I thought it was really confidently done. Yeah, I yeah. mean, what else do we think about the action scenes and how they're portrayed in this film? I enjoyed seeing everybody's different style of fighting. Yeah. I mean, the the ending scene where everybody's going all at it um it just feels so triumphant and so I, like you said like there's so much happening but i feel like it's all so tight and so i feel like it's less less of so much happening in a confusing way and more like you can watch this over and over again and see yeah a bunch of different things yeah focus on that character and yeah. you're like oh man that's cool and then you know yeah. just fully choreographed thing there as well you can focus on something else yeah i i love um what was it the last uh like fight that they have with with dr octopus oh. all three of them going at her uh i bloody love that i think it's so good yeah it's just like i you know i just can't even explain it it's just so much goes on <laughs> please do it's a podcast it's just incredible they're just being thrown <laughs> through stuff and i like how they team up and spin each other and like hit her and then you know mm. oh man it was really great and they do that double uppercut and just all that stuff and then and then i love that whole fight scene and then and like you know the background is all like like it's a jackson pollock painting and it's like some crazy <laughs> surreal yeah. shit going on uh in the background just like mm. like literally just all the paint you know all the paint yeah. is going on <laughs> and it's just yeah. making this incredible background and uh and so she, and she rushes them, and I, I thought it was such a funny as, uh, thing as well, like the comedy. You're like, wow, that's a cool action scene. And then she comes at them, and they're like, okay, this is going to be tough. And you've already had a really great fight scene. And then she gets hit by a bus. You know, I thought that was quite funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The animators lost a lot of fingers that day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with well, I guess with typing. Um, mm. uh, uh yeah in, i mean in that scene i just kind of love how they play with environments as well not just with the colors like you just have like it with from every every angle that yeah. you can think of like with trains and buildings the brooklyn bridge yeah all kind exactly of yeah goes all all over the place yeah um, i mean quinn what what other like action scenes do you love in this what what about the style do you that appeals to you in this film yeah in terms of style i think this time around i was um really struck by the composition because of course for any sort of superhero film you have to have the the sort of chaotic composition I think with intersecting lines and stuff but because it's animation what they're doing with like the frames and everything I think just indicates so much chaos I think it's like very seamlessly yeah. done in this film like I would say it's 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 over the top, but not in a bad way, like in a great way, in a way that yeah. I think really yeah. speaks yeah. a very clear message to the audience. So and the colors struck me this yeah. time, too. And the, you know, just the, the pop dialogue boxes and stuff like that is just a beautiful, <laughs> you know, reminiscent callback. But um, the composition, again, is what struck me this time. And I also enjoyed seeing like different angles too which i don't typically pay attention to so much in animated yeah. films but you could see these beautiful mm. you know cinematic connections to things that characters were feeling or you know especially in action sequences before the action took place like these mm. you know indications of power loss of power through angles and we loved mm. that this time I, I really also like because um, in the you know most of the first couple of action scenes like uh, you know Miles you, you do get the sense because of how like chaotic and and like multifaceted there's so much stuff going on and you know how fast paced the 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 quote unquote camera work is and and the cutting and everything like that you're like wow this is a full on fight you know this is this is you know pretty gritty this is. And I, I love these uh, early fight scenes because when 
uh, Miles is just trying to escape. He's just trying to survive. And you're like, dude, this is way too much for you. You know, this is, uh, I think one of the, the best fight scenes with that is where all of them are fighting in like, uh, uh, Aunt May's living room, oh. and it's like not a lot of space, but they're smashing through walls upstairs and shit like that. And you're like, there's so much going on in such a, sh- a small space. Mm. Um, and they're trying to do like physical comedy as well, where he he's like glued to the the cushions oh. and and just so much going on. And he's trying to run away, and you're like, get the fuck out of there, man! This is like way <laughs> too much for you. I think that is a great scene, but I, I think it's my least favorite action scene. I think probably it's just because you know, all the action is happening all at the same time and it's so fast with loads yeah. of characters in a small space. Yeah, it's pretty claustrophobic as well. Yeah. So it was difficult to know where to look at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it just adds to this rewatch value that, you know, you can come back to that scene especially and find new things. But when it's just Miles versus the Prowler, that was great simply yeah. because it was just focused on two characters. So yeah. I think that was the only scene for me where it kind of just pushes that line of going a bit too crazy for me. I mean, well, it's a bit too messy for you. Yeah. yeah. Anyone agree with that or? Yeah, I do. Or it's fine. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Yeah. Christina. <laughs> yeah. And I think they bring in humor with, um, Aunt May, like looking at her like vase, or, like her chair. <laughs> you know? um, yeah. Everything getting smashed. I thought that was quite funny. Yeah. Maybe to, to kind of, take away from that but i just found it uh, i don't know it just it, it was just too unbelievable that all these people could yeah. fit into this small space <laughs> yeah so little and i i i know you have to suspend your disbelief but i don't yeah, know yeah, fair enough. I, I don't like that section as much it's just not my favorite it's hard yeah. to take it all in um you know like you said it is it becomes worthy of watching that scene over and over again, I think, because there you cannot catch everything that's happening. And so for me, things no, like that no. overwhelm me a little bit. So maybe it's like the combination of mm. the crowded sort of claustrophobic space, plus so much happening, plus these new characters, you know, just coming together. And it's a lot. It's There's a lot going on. It's hard mm. to take it all in. Yeah, yeah. I yeah and the the thing I like least about that scene is like it feels like that the enemies that come in there's no like oomph to them because I'm just like okay there's this guy then there's this guy and <laughs> whereas like the prowler and kingpin you're like whoa like I I don't yeah. know they they're so more it's not even that maybe they're more interesting it's just that we get more time with them so i feel like i know what's going on yeah no 100% um, yeah yeah the, but i feel like those other enemies are kind of like wallpaper yeah yeah no i agree with that the scorpion comes in and you're like where the hell does scorpion come from <laughs> <laughs> he's so like how did he fit through the door <laughs> i think they're probably uh, like three uh, pretty developed uh, villains so you know kingpin and Dr. Octopus, I really like. And Prowler. Prowler as well. That's what's great about that last action scene with all the colors and the craziness with the collider is that it it all looks very crazy, but with the direction it's not. It's It, it, it does feel a lot more focused. You know exactly what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and certainly a highlight for me in that scene was when you have two animated styles clashing together of mm-hmm. the 2D spider pig and the more mm-hmm. pronounced 3D scorpion animation fighting against each yeah. other. And it weirdly doesn't look out of place. It kind of works, yeah. you know, for yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. um, I think that was the, a real achievement there. I like it anytime there's like swinging. Like my yeah. favorite is swinging through the birch trees at the lab. Yeah, that was cool. When Peter uh, B. Parker is like sort yeah. of tutoring Miles, um, <laughs> and then there's a there's a switch. But um, yeah, that's my. Whenever they're swinging in this film, I really really like it. <laughs> I think that that sort of like montage is when they play Saint Almost Fire <laughs> for like. 25 seconds or something and then it never comes back i don't know just (laughs) random uh mac do you have a favorite shot or scene i think that scene obviously all of it's great but that scene towards the beginning where he's doing graffiti with uncle aaron i thought that was so beautiful like and not just seeing them interact but like the actual graffiti as well like seeing their the process mm. and whatnot and and knowing that that's how miles is doing that essay on like 
his what what was the exact great expectations i think he has to do yeah exactly but he writes no Mm -hmm. no expectations and i just i don't know i felt like that set a really good tone for how that how that kid is feeling and why he's so attracted to hanging out with uncle aaron who is letting this creativity and rebelliousness you know yeah yeah and it's it's helping miles genuinely I mean, I do like that design where, you know, he's got like expectations graffitied on and it's just kind of the silhouette of Miles in the middle there. And yeah. I kind of really like the um, how he gets bit by the spider as well. Yeah, we've seen that twice before, but like you get some really cool angles there with the spider. And I mean, the spider looks kind of really cool and funky yeah, anyway, does, yeah. but but like when the spider bites his wrist, like it goes really dramatic and you get these real like comic yeah. book panels and split screen. And it's like going through his bloodstream and then and then like his red blood cells mutating and everything. It's all very dramatic. And then I like that, uh balancing that with the comedy of just like zooms out. It's yeah. Like, just like what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really underplayed and under- <laughs> yeah. non dramatic, completely not dramatic at all which i quite like <laughs> yeah. but it's that thing of like i mean the whole film is kind of a comic book anyway but you kind of go even further in that little bit where you just get actual panels yeah. <laughs> on the screen yeah, which is great cool. christina favorite shot or scene is it the swinging i love all the swinging sections um but i mean i i, I don't, I don't want to steal the iconic shot but i mean when he does the leap of faith and he's upside down. Um, when I saw that the first time, I was like, oh, perfection. I mean, yeah. it's <laughs> so great. Yeah. Chef's kiss. I feel like in that moment, though, he still hasn't worked out the non sticking bit because he, he brings some glass with him. Yeah, that still does look, <laughs> that still does look incredible, though. Like the glass falling with yeah. him. So, that looks so good. And yeah. I love. I love that whole sequence and then the swinging that comes through that and just everything, all that. That entire scene, I think, is my favorite shot, uh, my favorite scene. Yeah. And uh, I think you're right, probably yeah. uh, him falling down in slow motion is, is probably my favorite shot. Quinn? I like the the realization of the Prowler and that, you know, that death. It's just, you have to have that to be Spider-Man. So I think it was just really well done yeah. in this case. And a beautiful link to like any original Spider-Man, you know, tale or origin story. Yeah. Uncle Ben, yeah. Uncle Benjamin, yeah. Uncle Aaron, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I'm in, I'm in danger if my nephew ever becomes Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my favorite scene is kind of a really stupid one, but I loved it. Um, it's the scene where Peter B. Parker shows up and his web ends up being attached to Miles. And when the cops are chasing the Miles yeah. fi- fires a web from Peter to a train. And the physical comedy that they That's produce great. in that sequence is just amazing. <laughs> yeah. How they get away with some of the gags is great, where Peter Barker is like unconscious through it, like being dragged through the yeah. street. <laughs> oh, I like I like the uh on the, the police yeah. cars where it's like <laughs> he gets a snowman on his head (laughs) which definitely treads that line of being too ridiculous but i think it's so good yeah because of the choreography directing and editing is so good and that it gets away with it even for being an animated film based on a very familiar character the scene could easily feel too silly but it doesn't for me i I think they get the balance just right there i loved it i like um yeah i like a lot of the physical comedy and um I, I I like every time they uh, so you know where they do the 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 flashbacks. Uh, I always like those where they're yeah. like uh, they throw a comic book mm-hmm. and then it flips open and then they're like, "I'll tell you my story" and yeah. then they do that sort of stuff. I, I love that. <laughs> yeah, uh, that whole, one was great. You know, they're they're great. They're like you know thirty second uh, recaps of like every character and they're just so good. Like really funny montages. Yeah, yeah and it just feels like it can keep going keep going on and on and on and you would be like mm, yeah. happier the more it even happened <laughs> and i just those were great yeah 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 they're just done so well and uh, i i like the shot actually at the end of uh uh peter b parker's one where uh like he lands in new york uh like face first like he hits a bunch of billboards and stuff 
And uh, when he takes off his mask, he's like, uh, "I'm blonde." <laughs> there, yeah, there's like a, he was, you know, Spider Man. He was dead, but he was blonde and and uh, handsome. It was like looking in a mirror, and he takes off his mask, and he's all just <laughs> bruised to fuck, you know. I thought that was really funny. World of Horror directing score for Spider Man into the Spider Verse. I mean, I would say ten, nine, ten. Mm. Yeah, yeah, me <laughs> nice. too. Is there anything wrong with the direction? I'm actually okay with the ten. Me too. Nice. nice. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I think that's one of our firsts. Anna. I would go very close to a 10 for me, Boaz. Yeah, I'd go really, really close. Yeah. It's just that one scene in the house where it gets a bit too crazy for me. Oh, that's but... true. That's true. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I would go like a 9.7. Okay. We can go down to 9.7. I think it's fair because 10 should yeah. be, you have absolutely no notes, in my opinion. Nothing. You can't change anything. Yeah. Like no qualms. Yeah. I, I'm sticking with my 10. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's for me to take it all in. It's tough to take it all in, but it is so representative of what some sort of version of a multiverse would be like chaotic Yes, going everywhere, yeah. flinging, you know, in a small space. I just like, yeah. I still, I don't know. I don't see fault in it. I just, yeah, for me, so. I'm like, I can't see everything because I'm old or something, but. <laughs> <laughs> just rewatch it like a hundred times or something. But yeah. 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 And I'll do that because I'm willing to. Yeah. Do this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I do think that scene is a good way to depict how out of his depth, like, Miles is. I feel like that's the moment where they're like, oh, this kid can't handle this. Yeah, you're like, this is way too much. Like, run. (laughs) 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 9.8? Right, screenplay then. This film really takes some risks that no other Spider-Man film has done, which is they kill Spider-Man. You know, (laughs) Peter Parker from this world. You know, going into this film, you think, you know, Miles Morales meets Spider-Man as a mental figure. Then he meets all the other, all the others from the multiverse and you go from there. But to kill Spider-Man, one, it's so unexpected. And two, it makes Kingpin and the bad guys feel that much more powerful, you know. So I I thought that decision is really well paid off. It's really, it's a really rough death death scene as well, like uh, where... He's like, oh, you never, you know, get your family back and stuff like that, or it won't work, and you're going to destroy the world. And uh, and then Kingpin, you think he's like considering it or whatever, and then he just kills him, and you're like, whoa! And the way he <laughs> kills him too, like physically. Yeah, and this is actually one of the things I really like about the writing in the film is uh, they they pay off a lot of scenes like later. And I really like that because then it makes it when they do it the second time, it makes it hit like twice as hard because you've already, you know, seen how uh, how it goes, you know. So I like that towards the end when uh, Miles gets, um, you know, slammed in the exact same way. Um, it's the exact same shot. It's done exactly in the same way where Kingpin hits him with yeah. all of his might. And you're like, holy shit. Like, you know, because you've, you've, you've basically had that book ended. This is exactly how he killed the original Spider-Man. This is exactly mm-hmm. what he did to Miles. And then you're like, oh, well, he's dead. And then he's able to like lift himself up, yeah. you know, with his dad. Uh, you know, his dad believes in him. That just hit really hard. I was like, yes, get up, get the, you know, <laughs> kick his ass. And I, I, and I love that they pay off so many scenes like that, like um, Peter B. Parker, where um, there's, he says to him he's not ready, and he like sweeps his leg, and then holds him over, you know, and then it's like. You know, he can't do anything. And then he uses the same trick to make sure uh, Peter goes home. And I, I just love how they, yeah. they do this this rhyming with the script constantly. They'll do something and have it pay off um, a lot later, um, you know, in a sort of poetic way. And I just I just think that's really tight, really good script writing. And it's just, it makes it every time it happens later, like really satisfying. Like if you didn't have like uh, the original Spider-Man die that way, then it's less impactful when Peter gets hit that way. You know, you have no frame of yeah, reference. Yeah. And, and you know, when uh, he sends Peter home and he actually he beats him in combat using the same move, you're like, that's, you know, it wouldn't have hit that hard if you didn't have. And I, I just love the script, yeah. that how it does that. Just like, it, it pays off like so many things. I love how he defeats Kim P- Kingpin and he says, do you know about the shoulder touch? Zap. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. I love that. That that, that was a great payoff because you yeah. wouldn't have even seen you, like when that scene happens when he's connecting with Aaron, and then this is the guy that kills Aaron. And you're like, he connects with Aaron because Aaron's teaching him how to get girls. And you're like, this is when is this ever going to show up? You know, and it shows up once yeah. when he tries to do it with Gwen to disaster as a result. But where it actually succeeds is in his fight with the villain. That's how he takes him out. And you're like, yeah. that is that is so good. Just how that comes out of nowhere. Yeah. But I think my favorite callback is it's a leap of faith from uh, Peter Parker. You know, he's been saying that to Miles, but just before Peter goes back to his world, Miles says that to Peter again to give his relationship with MJ another go. So I thought they were yeah. great. Yeah, I love that because he's like, I'll screw it up again. Like, how do I know I won't screw it up again? It's like, it's a leap of faith. And you're like, whoa. Because you think that that callback has already been fulfilled. Yeah. <laughs> with the fact that Miles has done that massive jump and he's finally become the Spider-Man that he should become, you know, yeah. but then he's come back, comes back again for peter b parker i thought that was amazing yeah. yeah amazingly done i love it with kingpin too like we we see how kingpin lost his wife and child and then you know and, and peter parker's like hey this isn't gonna help and then kingpin you know obviously in a way loses them again so it's like even if he brought them back he yeah. didn't change himself so he would just lose them again they would still be horrified and disgusted right. at, at the person he is and yeah. like he hasn't checked he's an evil man and if he just brings him back he'd just lose him again and i love i do love that in the fight with uh miles in the train because you've already seen the flashback of how it happened and then in the train like there are other versions of them yeah. coming through and they see him attacking miles and you're like oh my i, I just love the yeah. symmetry in that film because you're like if you didn't have the flashback earlier that wouldn't mm. sting so much it like really hits hard mm. And I, I just love how the script is put together that so many impactful scenes hit twice as hard because like they have a rhyming component earlier in the film. It's like poetry, yeah. I think. It's it's written like poetry. <laughs> yeah. I'm still waiting for your poetry on our, our episodes, by the way. It'll cost you a thousand pounds a line. You know. It, I'll get I'll get to you at, at some point. That good. Yeah, it's that good. <laughs> I mean, I loved it when like the other Peter Parker comes into the world and he says, all right, people, let's do this one last time, like we briefly mentioned. And you don't just have a like a rerun like the start, but with like different jokes, you see beyond what we already know about Spider-Man. He got divorced. He got fat, learned about seahorses. <laughs> and the saddest thing <laughs> is that his Spider-Man themed <laughs> restaurant failed. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But I noticed that this Spider-Man is from our world yeah. that we are familiar with. The world that this film is set in is the alternative universe. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's pretty trivia. Yes, this Spider-Man is blonde, but there are little things like Coca-Cola is spelt differently, cola soda. <laughs> the New York Police Department is the Police Department of New York. Yeah. I didn't notice that. Well, yeah, they say PDNY. <laughs> yeah, PDMY, yeah. They have Red X, not Fed X. Yeah. And there's a poster of Shaun of the Dead that says from dusk till Shaun. Ah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's a good that's a good one, Martin. I feel like it's so clever that they introduce those things when this Peter Parker has arrived arrives and somehow before we haven't noticed anything different. So I thought that was a really yeah. was really mm -hmm. clever and new. Mm -hmm. And I liked how they play with that with all the other spider people with their origins. Not so much Gwen, though, when she says she entered the world like a week earlier. I thought that was a tad clunky a for weird. me. But yeah. Other than that, I thought all that kind yeah. of theme that went through was really great. Yeah. Well, I think my only problem with that is like, uh, yeah, it's like, when was that established that this thing can also time travel as well? You know, this, uh, <laughs> yeah. this multiverse thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I do find that a bit strange. Like that they could, because why did they all arrive at the same time except her? Like why did they all arrive on that day? And then she arrived a week earlier. Yeah. That's a bit, it's a bit random. She had to have a good, cool haircut for Miles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And it did look cool. I think it was a way to get her to meet Miles a lot earlier than all the other characters and stuff. Maybe that'll be paid off yeah. in the new movie. Yeah. They might explain it. You know, they might say there's, it's like a purpose or something. I wish she had had mm. more moments with uh, Peter B. Parker, like, because mm. that's what, you know, he's he's who she lost. And, you know, they did yeah. have a moment of her being like, yeah. you know, that's not your MJ. Believe me, I know. But I, I kind of wish they had a little bit more. Yeah, no, I 100% I, I I agree with that, because 
like in her retelling, you know, her Peter Parker had right. like died in her arms. I mean, that's horrible. Like that should be some serious trauma when she sees. But when they they talk, they're always just like taking the piss out of each other. Do you know what I mean? And you're like, yeah, they they do kind of skip over that. Like, you could have a whole subplot there, but maybe they're just like, uh, we can't cram too much. You know, she's mm-hmm. there's already a lot going on. The runtime is like two hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I do agree because uh, a couple of times I did even forget that um, you know she had a Peter right. Parker and that's who she lost mm. uh, because it's not really addressed. Um, but yeah, there is that one scene. I think it's interesting with the emotional scenes in this film, like as you were touching on Quinn, like the film is playing with the whole Uncle Ben death inspires uh, Spider-Man's motivation thing with all the other spider people and while you're watching the film you're always thinking who's the Uncle Ben in this mm. story and and you know and the Aunt May for Miles and his father you know is his father going to die or is his Uncle Aaron going to die and when Miles discovers that the Prowler is his Uncle Aaron and then soon after Uncle Aaron gets killed by the Kingpin I wasn't particularly moved by it personally maybe it's because of the close proximity of finding out that he's the prowler and then before you know it, he's dead. But I think it's more like hurtful for Miles' father. But here his father, you know, is at the door and doesn't want to lose Miles like how he lost contact with his brother who ends up dying. So mm. here his father is the Aunt May character in the other films. But here it feels more unique and frankly better because both characters mm. are struggling to connect with each other. You know, his father hates Spider-Man and he wants Miles to be a respectful kid and to fulfill his academic potential Mm. where Miles just wants to be a a fun kid and fit in. So I thought that dynamic was really well done and it really is the beating heart of this film. And, you know, we we go on about like how good the visuals are and how how amazing this style is and the directing. But without that, that core storytelling which i think is so strong like Mm. the film would really fall apart so i really appreciate that yeah i think also a a a really great uh story element is is just kind of this constant thing that's drummed in that you know uh miles is not ready for this like he wants to be the one to do it because he made a promise or Mm. or spider-man made him promise but like even when you know spider-man makes him make that promise it's like take that thing and put it up there and he even like climbs the the rubble and it's just like holy shit you know that is way beyond me yeah smaller building <laughs> yeah and then get immediately gets involved in a fight with a prowler and gets his ass handed to him and just everything in the film like he's he's not uh he's not strong enough he's not he doesn't have any control of his powers like he keeps getting his ass kicked he needs to get saved and everything like that and i like that when uh uh, his uncle uh, dies. He's really motivated. Like I've got to be the one to do this, and then that's what makes it hit even harder. Where they're like, "No, you're not ready," and it does feel like this really defeated moment where you're like, they they leave him tied up there. You know, his uncle's dead. Uh, his dad uh, hates Spider Man. His dad's lost his brother. His dad's come to like connect with him, and they're not connecting. And you just got all of this stuff, and then Rich uh, Peter B Parker. He's going to sacrifice his life. So you're like, that's another death on his conscience there's so much going on it's like the darkest moment and then he gets that speech and just i love at the end of that speech and then he get he can like work his powers that's just always such a really good moment for me like uh his dad gives him that you know heartfelt speech like whatever you do you know you'll make us proud and all that stuff you got the great music and stuff and, and i just love how he just taps into that breaks the webbing and then uh and then just like he 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 becomes like the better version uh, of himself and is like better than all the spider-man and he's able to do it and yeah that just hits really hard yeah i think you're so right um Bo and martin about like the emotional connection between him and the dad i think it is more powerful maybe than him and uncle aaron mm. as well because it's more it's not as organic as his relationship is with uncle aaron you know they share a bond um yeah yeah and it's just i think that's completely right. I love the scene where his father's talking um, beyond the door. And another thing about mm. this, just yeah, kind yeah. of going along with all of this, I enjoy that they don't waste much time on on there being any sort of friction between any of the Spider-Mans. Like, even Peter Parker in the beginning right. is like, oh, I'm going to teach you all of these things. I can do this. I can teach you this. You'll be good. 
And then, you know, after he dies, and then Peter B. Parker, there's a little bit of like trepidation and stuff. But then, and then when the other Spider-Mans come, you know, they're like, he's not doing this. He's not been doing this. He maybe can't do this. But no one is like stopping him. And I think that sometimes a lot of superhero movies spend too much time on that sort of trope. That's like the resistance to yeah actually i th- i think that's a good point like in most in most films like superhero films or even most films like the hero resists yeah. the call to adventure he's like he gets the call to adventure and he resists for yeah. as much as possible but here it's kind of it's inversed he gets the call to adventure yeah. immediately from from the blonde spider-man you know his spider-man and he is he is going to do it even though he's not, he's he's no training. He's not prepared, and everybody is trying to talk him out of it. Everybody's trying to stop him. You know, all the other Spider Men don't believe in him. They don't think he has enough training. They don't think he's right, and you know, just all of this pressure against him. So I think it's kind of the inverse of 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 the call to adventure and the hero's journey. So I think it's um, it's kind of refreshing as an origin story. You know. Um, so I think that's what makes it unique and it sort of stand out because it's like he's he's so strong as a character that he's willing to try even though he just cannot do it and you feel just so much of this pressure against him where they're all like you can't do this you know and then you know and then it's it's heartbreaking where they they take that choice away from him when he's the most determined you know I mean frankly going from the point of view of the other spider people they don't need him in that point because Mm. You know, they've got a spider pig with a mallet, so it's fine. Yeah, Yeah, they're good. But I also like the idea that he he has to be himself. He can't imitate other spider people. He's got to do it in his own way um, in order to be successful. So every time he tries to, like, emulate somebody else, he fails. Um, And so he just has to get it that he has unique talents and yeah. he's his. That's what makes him the Spider-Man. Yeah, he's got to do it his own way. Yeah, I, I, I think that I think there's a great um, like visual, you know, way of demonstrating it that they do. Like he buys that um, Halloween costume of of Spider-Man, <laughs> and he's wearing that through most of the film. So he's trying to be, yeah. you know, Spider-Man. He's trying to be mm. Peter B. Parker. He's trying to like be any of the Spider-Men while he's dressed as a Spider-Man. But it's only like at the end. He finally like gets his own costume. He makes it himself. You know, he does it his own way. You know, and I love that like thing where, uh, uh, what was it? He's fighting Doctor Octopus and like, uh, uh, what was it? One of the, uh, and he jumps. I think he jumps to 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 turn off the collider or something. Peter B. Parker is like, uh, uh, oh, something like, uh, did I teach him that? And she's like, no. <laughs> she's like, I didn't teach him you that. You definitely, definitely didn't that. teach him that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I thought that was really good. Yeah. yeah. Funny lines and people. Norman, listen to me. I can't let you open a portal to another dimension. <laughs> Brooklyn is not zoned. For that. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Yeah, I thought that was a very clever like train joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a Banksy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Yeah, I'm mildly obsessed with Spider-Man Noir. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yeah. my god. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, I, I, lo- I love where they're, they're they're saying stuff yeah. he should be able to do as Spider-Man, love- and they're like, are, "Are you able to get knocked up and pick yourself up?" And then Spider-Man Noir is like, "Do you ever just burn a match to see how you know it, it hurts your fingers?" <laughs> And then, like, Spider Pig is like, can you float on a trail of, you know, uh, of, of, yeah, like apple yeah. pie smell or something? Yeah. And I just like how, like, more ridiculous it gets. So, you know, I thought that was really funny. He says, wherever I go, the um, wind follows and the wind smells like rain. That's what I was going to say. That's what I looked up. Also, yeah. adore Penny Parker. Oh, my gosh. So cute. So cute. Yeah, yeah she so was good. great. She was great. I love it when Spider Man Noir has like leaves and he's like, I'll be keeping this. Yes! <laughs> like the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Rubik's Cube. Yeah. I don't know how to do it yet, but Do you see like the uh the, the end credits where they've got all the, you know uh, it's a it's a really trippy thing where they've got all the characters and different poses and it's it's such a trippy thing, but where they have uh uh in the credits uh Spider Man Noir where he's he solved the Rubik's Cube and all the other noir yeah. people are basically praying at him and stuff like that. Like, uh, you know. 
Uh, I thought that was pretty funny. They're counting on me. Probably not you specifically. I think it's a metaphor. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was really good. I, I also love when uh, Peter B. Parker is trying to like talk to MJ, but it's not his MJ. Uh, and yeah, I like how she's cool. like, uh, you, di- uh, you didn't like, uh, we didn't get any bread. And he's like, I'm so sorry. I wasn't there for you. Yeah. I will get you the bread and stuff like that. Said, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'll give you all the bread. I know I could do better if I could just you know. have another chance to give you the bread that you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was so good. Um, yeah. Oh, I like that bit where, uh, they, uh, what was it? Um, they're just outside Kingpin's, uh, you know, Hacienda, and he's throwing a party for Spider-Man's death, and all the waiters are dressed as Spider-Man, and uh, what was it? Gwen says, <laughs> like, the pig, and, uh, you know, Sp- you know, Spider-Ham is like, hey, you know, like... Uh, I'm right here. <laughs> you know, he's, he's offended. Yeah, 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 I'm right here. Yeah, yeah. That was but, a great impression. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was. <laughs> nice work, Martin. It's like he was here. <laughs> yeah, that was good, yeah. I think it's his only good impression. I just... <laughs> Always insulted with my impressions from Bowers. Uh-huh. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, they're they're mostly terrible. <laughs> Just one good one. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> you got any Spider Man tips you can tell me now? Disinfect the mask. You're going to use baby powder in the suit. <laughs> Heavy on the joints. You don't want any chafing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's like, that's basically it. <laughs> yeah. One one simple one that I really love is. What would I do if I were me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was good, yeah. I like when uh, uh, we're, they're exiting the building and it's just a bunch of regular scientists. And uh, he's like, can you go invisible? He's like, no. Well, I'm taking a bagel. <laughs> and then he yeah. takes a bagel and all the scientists have like laser guns. <laughs> and they're like, stop, he took a bagel. Yeah, I, got that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought that was great. Or Doc Ock, when she says, my friends call me Liv, my enemies call me Dr. Octopus <laughs> yeah. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that was great. That was I love that. Is that your favorite, Mac? Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, I can't think of what my favorite is. <laughs> Christina, you got a favorite? I, um, mine's actually not funny. Mine is, um, when the dad comes and is talking through the door and he says, and this would also go into the acting, but he goes, something happened, you know, and he mm. just like leaves it there cause he's yeah. emotional. Um, but I, I thought that was great writing, you know, just something happened yeah. and, um, Miles does know what it is, but the dad doesn't know that he knows. Yeah. And he wants to wait to tell him face to face. Yeah, it's a wonderful moment. Uh, another bit I really like because it's emotional and hilarious at the same time. Where um, at the end he talks to his dad as Spider Man, <sighs> and uh, I like that. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. we, we won't see eye to eye, Spider Man, but you know, I don't approve your methods, but I'll work alongside you. And he's like, you know, uh, I appreciate your bravery tonight. And he's like, thank you. And he's like, I love you. And then leaves, and he's like, what? <laughs> is that your favorite yeah that might be that might be my favorite yeah that's really funny i like that well my favorite is the funniest line for me is near the beginning that's related to my favorite scene where one of the cops says looks like a child dressed like spider-man dragging a homeless corpse behind a train yes that one that's my favorite too that was so funny or or maybe my favorite would be when uh spider-man's talking about how seahorses mate for life like that's really funny (laughs) that's so sweet yeah that is is great yeah uh screenplay score (laughs) balance uh man it's so good Um, i'm thinking nine still uh, like nine point yeah nine point five nine yeah something nine yeah i I, so strong oh as you don't usually go nines i'm so i'm so (laughs) impressed yeah i just really like this film (laughs) takes a lot to get you to a nine oh yeah usually nine point three nine point four yeah okay 9.3 i think generally it's amazing but i think for me personally where there are moments where you're it's supposed to be very emotional but i don't i'm not quite moved to where the film is wanting me to get moved to if that makes sense so okay yeah i i i kind of disagree with you wholeheartedly (laughs) like i'm I'm sort of on the films i cried when aaron died (laughs) page yeah 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 i get I, I was getting like i don't cry but i was getting kind of quite emotional so um, yeah i didn't feel a lot there for me 
So I guess this week I'm the soulless man. Um. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've switched yeah. Uh, roles. Yeah. Now I'm the blubbering mess and you're the, <laughs> you know, emotionless monster. Emotionless corpse. Um, <laughs> uh, world of horror. What are you going for for screenplay? 9.7. I don't like the Gwen thing. I do think that's, it, it doesn't make sense, but yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. It's a missed opportunity. It's clunky. Yeah. 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 But everything else I like. It's very tight. I mean, it fits well, you know, together. And I think the characters all make sense. And obviously there's a lot of really funny lines. That... I was going to say 9.5. Yeah, mm. I would say 9.5. The only thing qualm I have is like, I want more, you know, I want more of the, yeah. I want more of the other spider people. Well, you just have to wait till 2nd of June, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, just wait a week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what are you saying, 9.6? So you want to go 9 point? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I think this could yeah. come very close to the top of our list. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, think, I think so. Yeah. Uh, voice acting then. One part where I thought the voice work comes through is with the shoulder touch gag where miles visits his uncle aaron yeah. and tells miles about like the shoulder <laughs> thing and he says hey and try and tries it and uncle aaron is like no no no, no. it's hey <laughs> you know, and miles tries it again and it sounds yeah. all weird and i kind of just like the varying you know um performances there where he's where he says hey yeah, yeah that was kind of funny to me and and it it makes you like both of these characters a lot in that just very short space of time in that scene. I thought it was great. It's a good job. It does a great job. They do a great job in that scene of just completely, it's a very vulnerable moment, mm. you know, yeah. to to try and connect in that way and, and to teach someone how to do that and to have it be awkward. And I just love that. Yeah. I love that scene too. I think it speaks volumes of who they are. Yeah, definitely. I I think that's one great thing in in the script and then the voice work is like in in a very short scene they can get like just just the general feel like you you just get the relationship between him and Aaron, you know, from a really short yeah. scene and you're like, okay, I get their relationship, I get how close they are and stuff. I I feel like it also came came through when they had all the different spider people. Like I felt like all yeah. of them were so distinct and like. Yeah. Nick Cage did a great job and John Mulaney, yeah. like I think they were all they got the vibes really well. Yeah, Nick Cage very much puts on more of a gruffier voice. Um he doesn't have to do too <laughs> much with that, but he's he's brilliant. Yeah. I really like the voice acting as well of of Richard B. Parker, um uh, Peter B. Parker. Uh I just like that guy and how he plays Spider Man, you know. Jake Johnson. Yeah, I just I just love his his voice of Spider Man. I think it's just really good, and like he's he's quite vulnerable, uh, oh, yeah. and again like a slob, and just like not very heroic, but still at the same time can crack wise like he always used to, and he's still got yeah. really good comic timing, but then uh, can be quite like he has a heart as well. So I just think mm. he just he plays it pretty well rounded. Um, and you know and the scenes where he's like filled with regret you know yeah. they're pretty good as well so he does feel like a really well-rounded character and i think the actor uh, does a, a, yeah. a massively good job of that even with like the bread gag in the restaurant um from jake johnson who plays uh peter b parker you know yeah. you know there's a lot of emotion coming through his voice and and yet it's he's vulnerable yeah it is you know, it's yeah. very funny as well so it's just a great balance of bringing the humor yeah. but it's actually quite heartbreaking as well at the same time yeah you know? so you've got to do it emotionally but still hit the the timing to yeah. make it funny and i thought he did a pretty good job of that and he does a good job in a load of scenes like that where he can make it heartfelt and funny or just really serious and i thought he uh he does a pretty good job and even with like uh liv schreiber as uh kingpin like loved him he's very mm. menacing yeah. and evil and his voice yeah he puts a very yeah. gruff thing going on but if there's a brief very brief moment when like vanessa and his family yeah. are kind of like coming through on the train <laughs> you'll get that joke if you yeah. watch daredevil um <laughs> but <laughs> there's a little bit of you know there's there's a little something there that you can get yeah, hold of definitely. emotionally from that character which is kind of really cool for the villain to have as well yeah like he's really panicky like you know it's me you remember me and you're like this is the same guy who's kind of like calm and collected and very sort of ominous um, 
And I think Chris yeah. Pine is great as the original Peter Parker at the start. Yeah, yeah, he was pretty cool, and he's got such a like he's got a very brief um, uh, time as Spider Man, but his Spider Man is pretty distinctive as mm. well. You know, he's very quippy as as yeah. as we know him as you know Spider Man, and and I, I just love that joke where they're going through how you know what he's been doing um, as Spider Man, and I also did this. But we don't talk about that though. And they yeah. just the Spider Man three dance. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the first joke where I'm like, yeah, I know what this film is going to be now. This is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Do you see the one as well where he was like, uh, you know, I got hit by a drone, <laughs> you know, and that comes back at the end as well, where yeah. uh, Miles is, you know, saying how good everything's going and then he gets hit by a drone. I like uh, Brian Tyree Henry oh, yeah. as the father. I think. Um, yeah, he's really good. He's just great. Like, there's like one section where Miles says, do you really hate Spider-Man? And he's like, um, uh, and he just like, <laughs> yeah. and it's just yeah. like conversational and real. And then he yeah. like turns to his wife and he's like, you know how I feel about Spider-Man. Mm. And <laughs> it just it seems so natural. I love Catherine Hahn so much uh, and I'll watch like, <laughs> anything she does. So I, of course, I thought she was great in this. I don't think she was like stand out, but I loved, I loved hearing no. her um, rendition of, of, of Dr. Twist for sure. She's great. <laughs> Is that your favorite performance, Quinn? I don't think, <laughs> I think honestly, um, Miles, the actor is. Shamik Moore. Shamik Moore. Yeah. I think he's fantastic. So I would say him in second place, honestly, I'm going to have to like give to Nick Cage because I would never do that for Nick Cage. But I'm just like, I love his performance and this, yeah. like his, his Spider-Man noirs. It just makes me so happy. Like it just like mm. tickles me. <laughs> he killed it. But I, and yeah, then I guess third I'll give to Catherine Hahn. Christina, favorite voice? Mine was Brian Tyree Henry. Oh, nice. Yeah. I would say also Shamik Moore, but also, um, Mahershala Ali uh, as Uncle Aaron. I just thought, like, mm -hmm. I love his voice. He was really good. Very silky. Yeah, definitely. Like, he's so, like, uh, hey. just cool. He is, he's just a cool uncle. Yeah, he's so cool. He's just so <laughs> cool. But then, like, when they reveal that he's, he's evil and he's, like, on the phone to, uh, you know, Kingpin, um, I also like, you know, his acting for that. You know, he just sounds like, you know, just really menacing, but not like a completely different character. It's just like very focused, very much like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to kill this guy. You know? And you're like, wow, that's that's crazy. Um, I think he does a really good job. Yeah, I'm going to go with Jake Johnson as Peter B. Parker. I just thought he was hilarious, mm -hmm. to be honest. <laughs> just for humor and heart level, he was amazing. Yeah, I thought he was really funny. Yeah. Voice acting score, Boaz. What should we go for? I'm not going to go crazy and like do a nine, I don't think, but <laughs> so I always feel Sorry. like with animation, like you're only using your voice. So I feel like we always come down a point of that. Yeah. Well, I think like you, ca I guess you can make the argument that, that most of it is being done for you in the animation department. They're sorting how the faces should look. And stuff. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. Because you really have mm. to be able to picture, you know, it's like... Yeah, I, I guess that's kind of true. I think it makes it a harder job. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it is a different job because um, many times you'll see like really good actors do voice acting and their voice acting is atrocious. <laughs> and yes, uh, yeah. it is kind of... Examples, please. Uh, examples. Oh my god! The only example I have is really crap and it's really niche. Oh, right. uh, but Peter Dinklage during Infinity uh, War. <laughs> there was a video game oh, called okay. Des. Yeah, it was a video game called Destiny, uh, and his voice acting was pretty bad. Okay. In that. Uh, mainly, I can only think of video games because a lot of big name actors do uh, video games based on movies or okay. stuff like that. That's where I see most big name actors do voice mm -hmm. acting. Uh, Toby Maguire, uh, he wasn't that great in like the Spider-Man games. Oh, right. uh, okay. But again, that's pretty niche. <laughs> I'm getting really niche here of like you know an actor in a video game that you probably <laughs> played. But you know, so eight point seven, eight eight point nine, eight point eight. Then, <laughs> All right. uh, World of Horror uh, voice acting score. I'm gonna go nine point five because Martin, like you said, they're only using their voice, but also 
they're only using their yeah. voice. Like, I mean, yeah. you know, you gotta like, it's a different, yeah. you gotta touch people on a different level. And also, I mean, yeah. just in the realm of looking at animation and, it also depends because I, I don't know really much in the making of this. Were they all in the same room recording the dialogue? Probably a lot not. of the times they record it separately. Yeah, where then you've got to factor that in. You're not you're not looking and talking and acting with a person, so you've got to make that up in your head. So I mean, hmm. I was going to say nine, Mac. What do you think? I think I'll say nine point three because while I, I will still retain my my previous thought of like I wish we could move away from just big name actors I, there aren't only big name actors in this cast yeah but with that being said i do feel like diversity wise they did a way better job than uh kubo yeah. Yeah. and i do think the performances were like i had to look everybody up because i was like man this yeah. person is so good uh, yeah i think it's a it's a hell of a diverse cast you know there's you know, there's there's white people, black people, Asians, uh, women. You know, there's there's so many main characters of many backgrounds. Well, um, Zoe Kravitz plays MJ, so I feel like that's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy. I didn't even know that. You know, there's yeah. no they're not really thinking about the color of the actor; they're just thinking about the voice um, with that character and mm-hmm. with, with with all of the mm-hmm. voices, really. Whereas you can't really say that too much with Kubo. So 9.3? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot of high scores. Let's add them up. Yeah. <laughs> Spider-Verse wipes the floor with Kubo and the two strings with 56.5. Wow. Which wow. I think is, <laughs> yep, I can confirm that is at the top of our list. <laughs> Above The Thing nice. and yes. Depot Society. Um, that's going to be really, really wow. tough to beat. Uh, Kubo got 48.1. Um, yeah, that is that is quite a win. <laughs> but I think fully deserved, frankly. I mean, I saw a list from Empire with the 50 greatest animated films, and this one was number one. So that is a very big mm. film magazine that I read a lot. So, yeah. And uh, I, I think it's really unique in that respect because, like, Spider Man is such a big character. Like, they could have phoned it in, they could have half assed it, oh. and it would have still made bank, but they, they put, like, their whole ass into it. <laughs> and, yeah, it's great. <laughs> to put it mildly. Um, <laughs> next episode, we are going back to one of our legend episodes, and we are going to be talking about the great Denzel Washington and having a look at his films and hopefully have a guest from Check This Shit Out podcast uh, with Tommy Nugent. World of Horror, you have been amazing as always. It's been fabulous having you guys on again. And Quinn, it's so lovely for you to come on and hear your thoughts about these films. It's been fantastic. Guys, this is your opportunity again to talk about your podcast. And where can we find you? Matt, why don't you take it? Oh, Please, can you do it? <laughs> I'm kinda... Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, the World of Horror podcast can be heard on any streaming platform. <laughs> World of Horror podcast starring Mom and Mac. I don't know if I did a good job. You can cut that. <laughs> it's perfect. Trailer voice, Quinn. <laughs> thank you. And thank mm. you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I It just... it means the world of horror to me. <laughs> 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 dum, dum, no, it's just, it means a lot. It's so kind of you to ask me, and I, I'm i appreciative, and I right. love hanging out with cool. you guys. This was really fun. Mm-hmm. Thanks for having us. So you're on social media, Instagram, Twitter, is that right? Yeah, mostly on Instagram, World of Horror cool. Podcast. Nice. Uh, so it's time to say goodbye, people. It's goodbye from Christina. Goodbye. It's goodbye from Mac. (laughs) Goodbye. (laughs) It's goodbye from Quinn. (laughs) Goodbye. And it's goodbye from our serpent man who loves a uh, shoulder touch power sticks. (laughs) Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay, see ya. (laughs) And it's goodbye from me. I'm going to try and reopen a Spider-Man restaurant to get my food tonight. (laughs) (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, See you, man. That's it for part two. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. Check out part one if you haven't done so already. But don't stop there. Get involved and tell us what your favourite films are relating to the episodes. 
Send us a DM or comment on Instagram and TikTok at Film vs. Film Podcast for Twitter at FVF underscore podcast. If you do, we'll give you a shout out on the next episode. If you're feeling really generous, you can buy us a one-off coffee at our Buy Me A Coffee account. Remember, please leave us a five-star review and subscribe. Pod signing off.